Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Christopher Ecclestone. How are you today, Christopher? I'm well, thank you. Christopher, Christopher, we of course appreciate you as our European editor for Investor Intel, but for our Investor Intel audience, you may or may not be familiar with the fact that Christopher is the founder and of course Halgarten & Company is your company, and you just put out a research report on Chesapeake Gold Corp. Yep. And can you just give us a bit of an overview on what Halgarten & Company, what position you've taken with Chesapeake Gold? Um. It must be like two years ago that I first encountered Chesapeake Gold. Um, the interesting thing um, was not only the size of the asset, but it was also the fact that uh, I'd never heard of it before. Um, and that the, the company had, um, at the time, $35 million in the bank when virtually no one had anything. And since that time, it's been managed to um, uh, husband that money so that it's still got most of it. And it's come up now with a PFS, a revised PFS, which essentially shrinks down the um, the enormous capex involved with um, such a gargantuan project, and um, put it more in the price frame, I guess, of majors, um, who also at this time are um, you know thinking economically, or certainly much more economically than they did during the boom years. Okay, and something that I thought was interesting, they have now just. Renew well, they have a revised pre feasibility study and they did one in 2013. Can you give us kind of the highlights on what the differences are between the previous PFS and the one they just announced? Well, it, the, it's the money phrase, um, you know, 4.3 billion in capex, um, reduced to 1.9 billion in capex. Uh, that's the type of number that really catches the eye, um, particularly at this time when people want to see a smaller, um, uh, a smaller. Yeah, up upfront outlay for a project and what they've done is they've shrunk the uh, volumes going through the project from 120,000 tons per year to uh, 90,000 tons per annum and the effect of that is to um, uh, reduce dramatically the capex um, we, and they're sort of going to high grade at the start so that they maximize the revenues so that then they can plow the revenues back in to build the second half of the um, the project to then sort of ramp up for what is expected to be a, something like a 27-year mine life. Um, of course, uh, Chesapeake Gold is one of the largest undeveloped gold, silver, and zinc projects in the world. Uh, there's just a handful of these in the on the planet. Can you tell us what makes them different uh, from their competitors or what makes them kind of stand apart? Well, in fact, it's a unique in that, um, you know, while you have some big North American um, gold projects and some with silver in the mix, small amount of silver, this has very large, um, in, in excess of 18 million ounces of gold, plus then the silver component and a very meaningful zinc component. And zinc, um, for those who know me, um, I'm a, an unalloyed zinc fan um, since a long time um, and uh, starting to look up a bit at the moment. It's certainly not at great levels, but um, that component to this will certainly look better and better over the years. And that is unique in the Matadis project. All right. And I'm, I'm also interested in general. I mean, you are an esteemed mining strategist uh, in our market, and we've had a lot of buzz happening during PDAC last week. And uh, a lot of people were talking about what's going to happen with gold. Some have said we're looking at a bull market at the second half of 2016. I'd love to know what your thoughts are about the overall gold, silver, and zinc market. Well, I think um, that the gold price is at a good place where it is at the moment. Might go up slightly from here, uh, might not go up at all. Um, I suspect that silver will go up a little bit. Um, from here, I expect zinc to go up quite substantially. I wouldn't be surprised to see it end the year over a dollar. And of course, a dollar is the, the really out there number that um, Chesapeake are using in their um, their model for uh, the price of zinc. Um, I would see silver from here, you know, maybe going up a dollar or two. Um, and gold will probably doodle around in this area. Um, you know, the, the a great unknown is what happens on the international political stage. And that tends to drive the gold price. So we, we don't really know what will move it. But it's not going to go up. To 1400 without some other impetus and um, we don't know what that impetus would be at this point. Well 
I know you do a tremendous amount of due diligence when you're doing a research report for Halgarten and Company uh, with Chesapeake Gold. Um, with reviewing the management team and board of directors, uh, can you comment on the experienced management team and or tell us anything else that was very interesting that you learned in this process? Well, I think the most relevant thing is the, um, the nexus that Randy Rifle, the CEO, brings between uh, Gold Corp, where he's a member of the board, and um, Chesapeake Gold. Um, because frankly, Chesapeake Gold looks um, tailor-made to fill in a gap in Gold Corp's um, you know, production pipeline down the way. And um, of course, Gold Corp is also um, like a 9% shareholder in Chesapeake. So they're, they're really in the catbird seat to um, eventually make a move on Chesapeake. And uh, let's just say they've got a man on the inside or vice versa. So would you say this is a, a buy, sell or hold? Oh, it's definitely a buy at this stage. I mean, it's, if you look at the, um, the NPVs that are being talked about for the project, um, they're truly mind-blowing. And the market cap is um, still derisory. I know, I know the stock's moved up quite healthily over um, the last month or two, but um, it's not where it was. And certainly in light of the large cash store, uh, it's not distressed in any means, by any means, and it has um, this enormous resource and now it has a PFS coming in um, a lot lower than um, the previous, you know, frankly, scary number um, that they had for CapEx. So it's, it's certainly much more doable. Well, Christopher, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.